Hey guys, sorry I'm speaking. There's a lot of criminal. Um, continuation of my compass for beginners. Uh, once again, uh, I'm trying to reach out to those who never used the compass before, never got out in the woods, did any navigation with the compass, and uh, never played with one, or maybe someone who hasn't touched one in 20, 30 years, which uh, with the first two videos in the series, I had some good responses, and good comments, uh, especially from some guys that haven't touched one in a while and, and appreciated the, uh, the refresher course. And uh, I'm happy to do that. I'm glad that uh, everybody's taking that and appreciating it and, uh, and finding it useful for them. Um, it's also for uh, those who never touched one before and um, to learn how to use one of these before you find yourself in a situation where you need one. Um, or if you choose to learn how to use it, so you can use it when you go out hunting, camping, hiking, whatever. It's a valuable tool to have to keep yourself from getting lost. The first video we did an introduction where I talked about different kinds of compasses and the differences between the two, the pros and cons of some, and what you can and can't do with others with some. On the second video we talked about a back asthma and a panic asthma, how to shoot back, or about why to shoot a panic and back asthma before heading out to keep yourself from getting lost. This video, I want to discuss actually how to shoot that asthma and what you're going to do to do it. And the first thing we need to talk about is the, uh, the two different ways of holding the compass to shoot that asthma and why you need you hold it. There's two different, uh, two different variants of a, of a method of holding it. And um, also I'm going to explain a little bit more the difference between a free floating bezel, bezel and the uh, non free floating bezel uh, compass. Um, but obviously like we talked about in the introduction video, these little button compasses, the ones that don't have degrees and don't have dials that change and only give you north, south, east and west, they're no good from here on out. Okay, so we won't be touching these in the next in this video or probably even the next few videos. Um, because right now like I said, they're just for dead reckoning, for getting a bearing, figuring out which is north, south, east, and west. They're not going to help really navigate by degrees. Um, keep in mind, uh, just like in the introduction video, if you haven't seen the introduction video and it's the first one you were glancing at, go back to part one and watch it through in order because I'm progressing these videos with information that you need uh, for the next step. So if you're starting this series off at any other number than one, start off at one, please. Um, Let's go over first to um, the two different holds, okay? Um, when you hold a compass to shoot an asthma for that, you figure out what direction you're facing and what direction you're heading, it's very important uh, to use one of these two hold methods. The reason being it's, it's designed to help you get that target in line, to get yourself perfectly in line and facing that target. Uh, you're not going to shoot your asthma if, you know, if I'm looking at a tree 1,000 kilometers, or uh, you know, five kilometers off in that direction. I'm not going to hold my compass like this, my body turn, and looking at it and shoot it. Because it's not going to give. It's not going to be accurate. I'm not lined up and actually squared off with that target. It's much like a quarterback when he goes to throw a ball. He wants to have his shoulders square with his target, or at least the uh, the area on the field where he wants that ball to go, so that way he could be more accurate. And that's what these two holds are designed to do. So if you never use the compass or you're just starting one, start off by using these two hold methods and your, your um, asthma shooting will be a lot more accurate from the get-go. Um, I'm gonna use this lensatic for my demonstrations. Uh, the first method is, it's called the center hold method. And uh, both of these are important to learn, both these two methods, because they actually are used for two different, you can use either or, but one is better for one scenario, which we'll discuss in a bit. Uh, the center hold method, you see with this lens that it has this little little loop here. You can stick your thumb in it, all right? Stick the tip of your thumb. If you got meaty thumbs, you, know, you can only get the tip fine. If you got scrawny fingers, you can get all the way in there. Good, that's just to help level it off, to help make sure it's level and flat. Because you gotta remember that that dial is on a little tiny pin that's floating, okay? So you want it to be level. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your other hand you just hold it off to the side. If you need to balance it with the fingertip, that's fine. The whole object is to keep this level. That's what this hand's doing. Keeping your fingers pointed straight forward. The other hand is going to come all to the other side of it, pointing it straight forward. Now you're automatically pointing this thing straight and level. Okay? And this is called the center hold method because now what you're going to do is you're going to bring it into your chest. Okay? That's you're in the center of your chest, holding it level. All right? 
And now keep in mind, like I talked about in the introduction video, you don't want to have any metal on you. Uh, as I referred it to in that video and I showed you, I demonstrated you any metal up in here, around you, is going to interfere with this compass. So, you know, if you got a knife, neck knife or something like that, take it off, throw it behind you, do something with it, no metal in front of you, all right? So with the center hold method, what I'm going to do, let's say we're going to imagine you, the camera, all right? You are a tree about 2,000 meters away across a valley. I'm seeing it's big, huge, tall tree. Okay, when you shoot an azimuth and, you're, and you want to walk from here to there, okay, I want to walk from this point to another point. Either I saw it on a map and know it's that direction, or I just see it on the top of a mountain. Okay, there's a big, huge, gigantic tree bigger than the rest, or there's this big cliff face. That's where I want to walk, or I see a radio tower. That's where I want to go, all right? I want to shoot my azimuth so while I'm walking, I can stay on that azimuth. We're going to talk about it. Okay, what you're probably thinking, if you've never done this before, you're probably thinking in your head, well, if I can see it off in the distance, why can't I just walk to it? All right, we'll talk about that with a paper. I'm going to show you a little diagram that I'll explain why you need to shoot this azimuth to walk your azimuth en route to your, uh, to your target. So now, you got your center hole method. And now what I'm going to do is, Imagine that you are that big giant tree on that ridge line with no other trees, okay? So there's a big prominent terrain feature that I know I can I can, uh, I can recognize from almost any angle, all right? Um, I'm gonna center my body. I'm gonna turn my shoulders square to that tree. Even though it's off of a thousand meters, I'm gonna do the best as I can to square myself off of that tree using the center hold uh, method. I'm now gonna look straight down. And now remember, this is a free throw Free, free floating bevel, so it's going to turn and orient north. Remember in the other in the introduction video, these that don't, um, you have to adjust, and we'll go over that here in a second. But for the free float, man, that's hard. Free floating bevel, it's going to automatically point itself north. Okay, so right now north is that direction. So I'm going to orientate myself, square myself off of the target that I want to walk to, look straight down above my compass and I'm facing about 39 or sorry 29 degrees okay remember we're using the outer ring of the numbers which goes from 0 to 360 that's your degrees you're not going to use mills if the compass has smaller numbers on the inside you're using the outside uh, so right now I'm facing about 29 all I'm doing is I'm, look I'm looking down right here Okay, that's fate where I'm facing, the direction I'm facing. See this little wire, this wire, imagine this wire coming down, ticking straight through. And wherever that line, that extendable line goes through, that's the number I'm facing. Okay, so when I'm sitting here, squared off with the camera, and I'm looking down, a little bezel, bevel here, uh, stop moving. All right, there we go, it stops moving, and I'm at 29 degrees. Okay facing you. So now I know that for me to walk to that tree on that hilltop, which is a thousand, two thousand meters away, I need to walk on a 29 degree azimuth. So now if I take off walking and I walk 300, 400 meters and I want to check to make sure I'm on my azimuth, I'll flip up. Okay, cool. I'm at 29 degrees, so I'm still facing and heading that direction. Or if I'm walking and I trip and stumble and I, okay, I get up, alright, I can't see that target now. I want to make sure I'm walking the right direction. Pull my compass up. Oh, nope, I'm facing, I fell down, I got up. But when I got up, I stood up facing this direction. I need to be facing this direction, okay? So it's to orientate yourself to keep walking on a straight line. If you veer off that straight line, I'm going to show you on a diagram here the importance of staying and constantly checking every so often to check your uh, azimuth to make sure you're, you're heading the right direction. If you can see that target, you can just walk straight to that target. But there's going to be times where you can't see that target, and we'll describe that on paper. So that's the center hold method. Now with these non-free floating bezels, like I said in the first video, you've got to adjust it. You have your north seeking arrow, it's always going to stop pointing north. Doing the center hold method, you could do pretty much the same thing. You don't have that little thumb loop, but you could put your thumb on it and hold it up. You can take that and hold your fingers off to the side. The nice thing about these square ones is you can kind of help square yourself off of that target. This has got that little 
arrow. This is that silver Polaris I, I uh, described. It's got that little arrow pointing straight forward so I can point the whole shoulder, square myself off, and point towards that tree a thousand meters away. Now I gotta orientate my compass north though. The north arrow is pointing that way. Remember this free floating bevel, or this not free floating bevel. You have to turn and manually line the red end up with the north arrow so it's pointing north. Once again, when I'm going to readjust to make sure I'm there, make sure my needle stopped moving and I got it level flat, okay cool, I got the north on the dial lined up with the north seeking arrow, which is the red arrow in this compass. I'm going to look straight down and my compass is pointing 29 degrees, okay, towards my target. Same thing with this other one, this cheap bastard that I don't like. We'll line the North Seeking Arrow up. This one's got the two with the two luminescent dots on the dial, and then the one luminescent dot on the arrow, you know, where you simply put that arrow between the two dots so you know, okay, now it's going to the north. Hold it the same exact way and look down, and sure enough, 20. Now this one's a little off, but this compass is bad. This one, this one's giving me about 25 degrees, but I don't, I don't trust this compass because of the way it sticks. Um, when the more expensive version of this, if you remember in the induction, I said this is a cheap knockoff one that I like. It actually has a, a hole, and we'll discuss this later. This one has a line going down it, and it has a hole, and it has a wire. In it. So if you see one like that, and it's made by Silva, it's a good compass. So anyway, that's the center hole method. Now, the good thing about what, what the center hold method is good for, it's good for good visibility. Like I said, you've got a real prominent terrain feature and it's standing out above any other feature. Or you're going shorter distances, say within 1,000 meters. Okay, because it's not super accurate, but it's accurate enough within 1,000 meters. Now, for more accuracy, to be more accurate, or if you're shooting a target, say you're in a big, in the plains or in the desert or something like that, and you see a big jagged ridge top on top of a, of a mountain range that could be, you gotta remember in the desert you might have visibility for a few miles, okay, or on the open plains you might have visibility for a few miles. So let's imagine that you're in the middle of the desert and you see a ridge line off to the horizon, which could be about two, three, four miles away, whatever. But you see a big, huge radio tower on top of that one. You can just, just make it out enough to shoot an asthma through. Shooting it with the center hole method will still, while you're standing there, point you in that right direction in the general vicinity, but it's not going to be completely accurate. The longer the distance, the more you have a differential between uh, uh, your asthma from where you're standing. And we'll discuss that later when we talk about a. Uh, uh, Asthma differentials and uh, got my thumb stuck. A more accurate way to do this, and that's one reason why I like the Lensatic compass. It's called Lensatic because it has a lens in it, it's part of it, anyways. But it's got this little open spot with a wire. It's got this little magnifying glass. This magnifying glass has a little notch. And then what you do is you want to line this up. See that little notch? You want to line it up so that the leg comes just to about the top of it, but you want to be able to see through that notch so you can see through that opening with that wire, okay? And this little notch, that opening and that magnifying glass will all come into play together here in a second. What you're going to do is you're going to stick that thumb through that hole. And this is called the compass to cheek method. Can we guess why it's called the compass to cheek? because you're going to take your compass and you're going to put it up here on your cheek, all right? Holding it steady and level. Almost like you're trying to sight through a scope or a little peep sight on a, on a rifle. You're going to look through that notch and at the same time look through that little, that little uh, opening there with that wire. That's why it's important that you stop that. Some compasses models have a little clip on the, on the cap so when you close the cover it sets right on top of that notch. All right, so I'm looking through that notch, through this hole on the lid, on the cover, to you, my target, my, my tree, 2,000 meters away, or my tower on the ridge, okay? What I wanna do is I wanna line, closing my eye, using my dominant eye, okay, it's important, just like you're shooting, all right? 
It is called shooting an azimuth, so imagine you're shooting a rifle on a target. I'm going to look through that little line, and I'm going to line that little wire up. I'm looking up through the hole to that tree, and lining this wire up directly on that on that tree, dead center, center mass of that tree. If I'm looking at a big target, like say I see a cliff face that might be 100 meters wide, okay, I'm going to center that line dead center of the cliff. I don't want to center it to the left or the right because that might make you veer when you have uh, problems in, comp in azimuth differential. You might drift, okay, because you can drift when you're using the compass. Um, so you're going to go center mass. Now, I got it nice and level, my bezel stop, bezel stop moving. You can see my target on that line. I'm now going to look down through the compass, because what the compass is doing now, if you hold this up like this without a compass, you can't focus your eyes on that dial. It'll be blurred. Okay? But this ingenious invention, they put a little magnifying glass there. So after I line that wire up, I look down through that magnifying glass. And I'm at 29 degrees. You can see it. You, the, the dial will be blown up so in that little magnifying glass so you can read it. And if you have enough light, if you can, sometimes you'll even have the reflection of that wire uh, dissecting, bisecting right through the number that you're, the, the degrees that you're pointing. So I'm at 29 degrees. It's actually a little, actually it's more about 28 degrees about 27, 28 degrees, but you can see how from down here it told me 29, up here it's a little bit more accurate, dead center of the post of my camera, it's about 28 degrees, so it was just a little bit off, alright, that's the compass to cheek method, with these other versions you can't do that method, so you're only stuck with, you know, a center hold method, so more accuracy, that's why I always prefer a lensetic compass, especially for long range uh, going out far. So, just to recap, you have the compass to cheek method, you have the notch lined up with the lid, so I can look through my lid, look through the notch, through the lid, put my wire on the target, look down through the magnifying glass, and get my azimuth, which is about 28 degrees. Alright, center hold method. You got your thumb in there balancing it, you got your fingertips balancing it, your hands on the side, lining it up, pulling it into your chest, free of any metal, and you can look straight down, and I'm at about 28, 29 degrees once again, lined up on the target. Those are your two hold methods for shooting an asthma. Alright? Now, we're going to go over a little bit here, I'm going to bring the camera over here, and we're going to go over a little diagram of why it's important to shoot an asthma, even if you can see your target. Obviously, you've got to see your target to shoot an asthma, so we're going to go ahead and uh, discuss that.